think some of you eighth graders might need to move out of that front row. It looks like you're very squished. Anyway, welcome tonight. And um, we're honored to have Deacon Tom here tonight to um, start us off. And then I will give you instructions on where to go afterwards. Thanks, Deacon. So it's great that you're all here tonight. Thanks for being here. This, did somebody tell you all to sit in the front? It's so great that you're doing that. That's not the usual thing, so thanks for doing that. Hey, uh, at uh, Mass this weekend, you heard the uh, famous story uh, about Emmaus. Um, and just to refresh your memories here, that story is about the uh, disciples, a couple of them, two of them, and they're, they're leaving Jerusalem because they are very sad. Uh, the person that they were following, their teacher, their inspiration, died. He was crucified. And they have nothing left to live for. So they're sad. They're going back home. It's all over for them. They're giving up on all of that. And suddenly, somebody is walking beside them. And who's walking beside them is Jesus. But they don't recognize him. They don't know it. And uh, as they walk along, they're telling him what happened and everything. And more and more, he starts to explain to them what his life was about. How the scriptures from thousands of years previously told that he was going to be coming. And told what he was going to accomplish. And told why he was going to die. And told what that death meant for all of us. And how he'd be raised again. All of these things happened... Um, in this gospel reading today. And so Jesus uh, stayed with them when they got to where they were going. And as he, they're talking to him and having dinner with him, they realize who it is that they're having dinner with. And they realize that after he takes the bread and breaks it, blesses it, and shares it with them. And then they suddenly realize who that was who was speaking with them. And their hearts are so overjoyed that they just run back to Jerusalem and tell the other disciples uh, what they saw and what they heard. It's something that I think is uh, a little bit, uh, might speak to us in a couple of different ways too. You know, uh, a lot of times in our lives, we don't recognize Jesus when he's walking with us. We don't see him. And something happens in our lives and we are suddenly... Um, inspired. We're suddenly blessed by Jesus' presence in our lives and he speaks to us. Um, I don't know if you guys know, do you know what this is? Here's a clue. It's a puzzle, thank you. Uh, some people call it a jigsaw puzzle. I don't even know if anybody does these anymore. But uh, it's a lot of pieces. And sometimes, you know, when you dump it out of the box and you're getting ready to put it together, um, some of the pieces are upside down, they're all mixed up and everything like that. And I think sometimes we feel like our lives are like that, don't we? I think maybe especially uh, at your age, a lot of things are happening to you that are maybe causing you to wonder, what does this all mean? You know, and that can happen when things are happy, um, also when things are a little bit sad. When we understand things and when we don't understand things, we have to kind of make sense of it and put our lives together. And that happens the best and the most eloquently and the most meaningfully when we do that with Jesus in the middle of all of that. When Jesus is a part of uh, us interpreting what's going on in our lives, he can help us solve these puzzles that we're presented with. Um, help us figure out where all the pieces go and what does this event mean in my life and what does this person's presence in my life mean to me. And so I think um, we might want to think about that a little bit, you know, as, we, uh, as we're here tonight, PSR, sometimes we think that's a, a chore or something we have to do, but the whole reason for you being here is to help you get in touch with the master puzzle sol solver. You know, somebody who can help us make sense out of all the things that happen in our lives. And I think that's, uh, that's why we're here tonight. So let's kind of keep that in mind as we uh, go through the rest of the evening. And, um, you know, whatever you're doing, maybe the rest of the week, maybe the rest of the school year, only five weeks left to figure out a whole bunch of things that are going on, what this school year meant in your life, 
what it's going to mean as you as uh, things move forward. So uh, let's take a minute and uh, and pray for uh, God's blessing on the rest of our uh, our evening and the rest of our week and the rest of our year. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and loving God, we thank you for the many things that you do for us, the many gifts that you give us, and we thank you for your gift of your Son. We thank you for what he's done for us, what he does for us in our daily lives, and we ask for your help in seeing him in the people and events of our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So thanks for your attention tonight. Mrs. Passau has a couple of things to say. So Deacon Tom mentioned, what, five weeks of your school year? Two weeks of PSR. And so we have a lot of things planned in these next couple of weeks, so make sure you're here, especially the last week, because it's going to be a good one. Okay, so tonight we can say thank you for, to the sixth grade for being here, and you can go ahead to your class. Have a good one. Oh, and if anybody has still their rice bowls at home, you can bring them in and bring them to my office. I'm getting ready to count all that money. If anybody wants to help, let me know. No, I'm just kidding. Fine. Seventh grade. All of the seventh graders are going to the banquet room tonight. So you may be dismissed to the banquet room. And I welcome all of the eighth graders for your last confirmation session. The next time we meet all together, we'll be at your practice on May 19th. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I can, I can uh, if I can get this pulled up uh, relatively quickly, or you can get them organized, let's put it that way. You can do that. I, all right. Thank you, Mrs. Passon. Thank you, Dick and Tom. All right, eighth graders should know what I'm going to ask everybody to do. I got a whole bunch of space over here. I need you to fill those in. And just like we've done since okay. session one, I want everybody in a particular way. And there's a reason for that. We're going to talk about that real quick. Take a look at who you're sitting by and make sure that we're mixing it up a bit. Mixing it up. All right. So before we get going, there's a couple of things that I want to say. And number one is, remember the first session that we had back in August, let's do that, where we asked everybody to come forward. And during the period of time when Mrs. Passau was going over the announcements, there was a very big problem with a lot of people, especially up in the front, who were constantly talking. And it required either Mr. Lodato or I or another teacher to come and sit in that pew to get you to stop talking, start paying attention. <laughs> well, over the past couple of weeks, there's something that we have noticed. And what happened today just reaffirmed it. If you notice, nobody had to come sit in between a group of people that were talking and not paying attention. The last PSR session, I didn't have to do that. Uh, I might have done it for some seventh graders. I might have done it for seventh graders. But I didn't have to do it for any eighth graders. That tells us that people are starting to realize something. That we're not here to talk with our friends and stuff. We're here to pay attention, to listen. And it's extremely obvious. We were, at a con we were at a session with the PSR teachers last weekend. That was one of the first things that came up. That during the time we were in church, before the classes begin, all of the PSR teachers realized that the kids are no longer talking with everybody while their people are talking. They're not doing that anymore. There may be some here or there. But for the vast majority of you, it's not happening. It's a progression. It shows that you're maturing which fits in very well with what we're going to talk about tonight. This is the last PSR session that we have. Sorry, the last confirmation session. Not the last PSR class. The last confirmation session before you receive the sacrament of confirmation. So we're going to talk a little bit about 
So we're going to watch some videos to wrap these things up. Then we're going to have a bunch of questions that review over everything we went over since August of last year. And then Mr. Lodato and I are going to wrap it up with final thoughts of what we personally think, how the, how the sessions went, and our advice for you going forward. Before we get into all of that, there is something that I want to reiterate. And we do this every time in the, in the confirmation sessions, and a lot of people don't understand exactly what it means. Hopefully by this time you might realize this. But why do I ask everybody to sit next to somebody they do not know? Somebody raised their hand if they remember why I asked you to do that. Way back last year. Nobody remembers. Nobody knows. Raise your hand if you know. All right, Zach, why do you know? So we're not chitter-chattering with friends. No, that's not why I asked everybody to sit next to everybody. Sit to some, next to somebody they don't know. Anybody else have another guess? Mr. Lodato will know. I do. I do. So, Mr. Lodato and I, those who don't know, and we mentioned this before, we went to school together. We're the same age. We've been to the same schools. We were in the same classes. And when we left St. Gregory the Great, it was a Catholic school in 8th grade, and went to Charles F. Brush High School, in ninth grade, in my homeroom class, just give you an idea, I think St. Greg's had a graduating class of what, 85, maybe 100? Yeah, not much. Yeah. I had like 30 people just in my homeroom class. And I knew Zippo. No one. <laughs> I knew no one. The first day, I'm sitting there, just a minute, Evie. I'm sitting there, staring. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't know anybody. A couple of days. I still don't know anybody. Finally, the person who's sitting right next to me reaches over, taps me on the shoulder. She said, Hi, my name is Kim. Are you new here? I said, Yes, I came from St. Gregory the Great School. Oh, it's nice to meet you. Kim and I started talking. Kim and I started really talking. <laughs> Kim and I started dating. We've been married for 30, 32 years. It'll be 32 years in June. She was 13 years old. I was 14. It all started with somebody noticed somebody they didn't know and introduced themselves to them. Throughout these whole confirmation sessions, I've been asking everybody or coming up with questions of what we want you to ask the person that's next to you. Believe it or not, these are the types of questions you would ask somebody if you just met them. Hi, where do you live? Hi, do you have any hobbies? Oh, we got a joke. Uh, somebody who, what's, what's so funny over here? Uh, Charlie, right? Yeah, yeah what, what's going on? Is there a joke, Petra? It's funny how the first question was, where do you live? Where do you live? Okay. <laughs> Evie, yes. Um, 40 people in the class? No, uh, 30, be, 30 people in my homeroom class, 437 in the ninth grade. Yes, correct. Yes, it was a big school. 437 people in the ninth grade alone. Just the ninth grade. Just the ninth grade alone. 437. We graduated, there was to be a theater called the Front Row. We actually had concerts and stuff there. That's where we went for graduation. Anybody know what the enrollment is at Chardon? Like all together? <clears throat> like how many kids are in there right now? The whole school, a whole school district of Chardon? Or just high school? Uh, just the high school. High school, which is 7th, 8th. Seventh, from seventh grade up to twelfth, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, just between the ninth and the twelfth grade. Ninth and twelfth, yeah. How many kids do you think are in there? Let's just take a wild guess. Oh, wait. Um, Matthew, no, I know. Matthew, what do you think? Twelve uh, hundred. You're, you're right. How did you know that? Lucky guess? 
Like you <laughs> no? You count everybody as they walk by or you stand at the yeah, door? One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, there were over, almost 1,700 in the school from ninth grade through uh, 12th where we went to school. Yeah, so. that's big. Anyway. Big school. So what we're going to do today is, as I mentioned, we're going to have a review period. We're going to come by, we're going to ask people questions. It's going to be this side against that side. All right? This side against that side. But it's not going to be the, the last time where somebody shouts out the answer. We're going to come out and talk to somebody you. And we're going to ask you who the person next to you is. All right? And we're going to ask you what question you asked them. Of all the questions that we went over since August until last confirmation session, pick one of those. Where did you grow up? Sorry, where do you live? How many siblings do you have? What's your favorite color? What's your hobby? All the, remember all those questions. Food, yeah. Favorite food, yeah. yeah. All right? Any place you want to live in the world, where would it be? All right, ask that person. Pick one of those. Ask the person on your left and your right. And it's all because you never know who that person is going to be. Somebody raise, raise your hand. If you, during these PSR confirmation sessions, if you met somebody you did not know before and you are talking to them now, you don't have to be best friends or anything, but you're actually talking with them. Raise your hand if that's happened yet. No one. Had a couple of people last year, all right? You never know who that person next to you is going to be. Most of the time, it's going to be somebody that you may nod at, at the hall as you're walking by in school, all right? Or say, wave as you're, as you're walking down the street, or whatever it is. But it could also be a friend. Mr. Lodano and I met when I was, we were 10 years old. That was 19... That was a little while back. That was 19 a long time ago. All right? <laughs> a little while back. A long time ago. All right? We were, we were 10 years old. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it could also be your spouse. Remember I mentioned, I was 14, my wife was 13. Everybody here is those ages I just mentioned. 13 in, last, in the fall, 14 now. Yes, Evie? Wait, you were 14 and she was 13? I was 14. Yes, ninth grade, yes. <laughs> well, we're gonna. Yeah, um, how old are you right now, Evie? I'm 14. Okay, hold on, hold on. Next August, this coming August, how old will you be? Um, well, I would turn 15 this summer. Okay, but when are you going to. How old are you going to be in August? Um, 15. 15. All right, raise your hand. Somebody's going to be 14 in August. <laughs> yeah. Raise your hand if you're going to be. Sorry. You're, you are for okay. Raise your hand if you're going if you're still 13 in August. Oh, you don't have early. Yeah, my wife was 13 years old. She had a late smart birthday. One. She might be very smart. She had a late smart. birthday. Yeah. Start her early. She was smart. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> well, let's get um. Let me warm up on, with a couple slides. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah warm up with a couple slides, and then what, you're going to do the icebreaker. Uh, I think we just did the icebreaker. We'll probably go right into the videos then. Okay. That. Let me. Uh, let's get um. Let's get some prayer in here. Like uh, I know Deacon Tom started us with a little bit of prayer, but um, let's rise up and I want you to uh, let's let's say the prayer to Saint Michael. All right. I also want you to know you can look on the screen, or if you're familiar with the Mass, you can open up one of the gathering books, and in the very back cover there is the prayer to Saint Michael. So let's uh, let's say the prayer to Saint Michael to get started here. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl through the world, throughout the world, ruin souls, amen. In the, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You can have a seat. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Milano, for warming us up a little bit. Just a couple reminders. Just a couple reminders, right? The big, <laughs> we're talking, this is all about relationship. This is all about communication. This is all about talking and listening. This is all about getting to know, like, and trust each other. This is what we're talking about. Success happens when preparation meets opportunity. These are all reminders. These are all life lessons. These are all things that you take with you. This is, these are the essence of building a relationship with God. This is why it's important that we talk about these things up front. And it's the power of the pause when you're talking and you're having a conversation and you're acknowledging people. This is what happens. You build a community. A community of believers is what we're trying to share with you. 
That's why you come here. That's why you come here. So I want to um, also let you know that God loves you. I don't want to remind you of that. Never forget that. We're going to talk about, you know, landing this, these confirmation sessions and the things that we've learned. And hopefully, if you, if you don't remember anything, you remember that, that, that God loves you. And I also want to just talk about why. You know, so, so we always talk about why we're here. So why are we here? Why do you think we're here? Learn about God? What else? Anybody know why we're here? If you don't know why we're here, then there's no purpose. There's no, there's no drive. There's no motivation. Love each other? Excellent. Good. Any other reason why we're here? You can just throw them out. It's fine. Fear not. What's going to happen isn't, in a couple isn't weeks? Fear not, fear not or be not afraid. Uh, if you Google search this, it says it's in the Bible 365 times. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Fear not, is what Jesus says. Why do you think we're here? What's going to happen in a couple of weeks? You affirm? What does that mean, though? What does, confirm, what does confirmation mean? What does it mean? Maturing your, maturing your faith. How are you going to mature in your faith unless you understand what? Hey, let, me, let me explain it to you. Uh, the reason we, I kind of pin on Pin, pin this down. So if you know how to do something, you'll always have a job. But when you know why, then you'll be in control. So if you know how to come to Mass, if you know how to stand and sit and kneel, that's great. But it won't matter much to you until you know why you're here. So why do you ask, why do we come to church? It's more important than how you know how to be at church. You follow what I'm saying? So some of the reasons is we build a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's pretty obvious. We love each other, right? Another one is faith. Now, faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence, evidence of things not seen. Faith is extremely important to build your faith here. This is the best place to build your faith. That's why we ask you to come here together to help understand that. Because if you don't have faith, you don't have anything. And this is the best place to learn how to build faith. So that's one of the reasons we're here. So I also want to share with you, too, justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy, these are reminders. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. That's what Jesus asked you to do. Have mercy on each other. Just because they might have wronged you, that means you forgive them. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. And grace, grace is when you get more than you deserve. That's what grace is. And grace is the benefit of faith. So when you have a strong faith, then what you get in return is grace. You get more than you deserve. So when you come here together as a community, when you get to know each other, when you get to learn where you live, when you get to learn your, your favorite color, your food, you get to understand each other a little bit more. And when you get to stay here, you get to understand Jesus a little bit more so you can build a strong relationship. That's the reason you come here. Because without faith, without faith, you're going to be lost. And with faith, you're going to be receive grace. You're going to get more than you deserve. All right? So yeah, so that's a couple of reminders for you, a couple, couple ideas of why we might be here tonight. And um, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's clear our heads a little bit, get our feet on the ground. Let's listen to uh, what the Holy Spirit's going to tell us, or learn, uh, learn from the Holy Spirit today. And uh, the Chosen series, uh, this is, I think it's called, where, where do we go from here, right Carl? Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, hopefully this didn't crash. It so is this a, is... Um, There's a Windows machine. You can, yeah. yeah, you can shut that down if you want. It's a one, one segment, I think, 18 minutes long. 18 minutes. Uh, there's two segments, so it's probably like nine minutes each. Yeah, yeah they combine them, I think, or they're nine minutes each. So um, this kind of wraps up the series, kind of where do we go from here. So um, <laughs> we're going to see if we can get we, this We had a bit of problem getting this to start beforehand. Hopefully we're run into the same problem. Yeah, let me take a second here. <laughs> Technology. Uh, by the way, while we're doing that, if you have not talked to your neighbors, go ahead and do it now. Yeah. You're going to look awfully foolish if I come and ask you a question and you don't know the answer. All right. What's your name? I'm sorry? <laughs> sure. 
I see a lot of people sitting next to people they've done for a while, so I, this shouldn't take long. All right, we're done. Sun shines bright as it moves. Got it. Yeah. About anything you learn from Augustan, so you might learn something here. So pay attention. Yeah, pay attention. This is going to review everything. Pay attention. What's faith have to do with life in the real world? Everything. Only faith is capable of giving us answers to the questions about why we exist, what happens when we die, does life have meaning, who am I? And only faith is the way that you tap in to the grace that you need to live your life to the full and to reach the happiness that you were made for. Jesus himself said in John 10, 10, I came so that they might have life and have it to the full. He didn't say, I came to make them someone they're not. I came to make them boring. I came to take away their fun. I came so they might have life and have it to the full. But you know what? Living out the kind of life that Jesus Christ called us to is not easy. We can be pulled down by our own weakness. We're pulled down by a million temptations in this world. We're pulled down by the devil. All right, and Jesus was very clear about this. The devil's not some fantasy fairy tale creature. It's actually a fallen angel who wants to destroy you. I mean to freak you out, but it's good to keep that in mind. So how do you live out that life to the full? Not just now, but after you're confirmed. See, because confirmation is not a graduation. It's actually a next step, so you can more profoundly and deeply live out the life that Jesus Christ called you to. There's five simple disciplines of a disciple I want you to remember, that I want you to live out long after your confirmation. So you can plug into the grace he's gonna give you in confirmation in your daily life. And the word discipline and disciple have the same root. That's for a reason, because you've got to be disciplined to be a disciple of the Lord. One, first, you've got to want greatness. Pope Benedict XVI said, This world offers you comfort, but you are not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. What is greatness? Greatness, it's not just about being a big deal in the eyes of this world. Look, you might succeed in a lot of different ways. You might become a big deal in, in, in any field of work you might go into, and God bless you if you do. You know, develop your gifts and talents. Work hard in life. But greatness is success not just at the things you accomplish. Greatness is success at who you become. That's the most important kind of success there is. And the more we become like Jesus Christ, the more we live out a life of holiness and virtue and service to others, the more we live out lives that aren't just about us, the more we succeed at greatness. Now, if you succeed at everything else that this world throws at you, every, every, every other way in this world, man, you become a big deal, fine, whatever. But if you failed at greatness along the way, you failed in the ultimate sense of the word. Because you failed at the whole reason you're on this planet. The world offers you comfort, but you were made for more. You were made to succeed at who you are. You were made for greatness. So one, want greatness. And I know it's so easy to fall into temptations. I want to be the next teen pop star, whatever. Train your heart to stop wanting that stuff because it doesn't work. It doesn't make people happy. Train your heart to want to be like the saints. Two, you got to pray. I told you, this isn't really overly complex. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, my secret is simple, I pray. But sometimes we mystify prayer. Hmm? We make it like this, this foggy thing, we can't quite figure it out. And we think, I have to be a monk in order to have a real prayer life. If you call to be a monk, that is awesome. Most Catholics aren't. Prayer is something that's accessible to absolutely everybody. Prayer is a simple thing. It's a conversation with your maker. In any conversation, you listen and you talk. Especially the person you're talking to and conversing with is more important than you. you got to listen. That's the top priority, and that's certainly the case with God. How do you listen to God? He doesn't speak in a way that's difficult to figure out. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, read them. The Gospels, they'll change your life. Get up every day. Start every day by looking up the mass reading of the day, chewing on it, 
thinking about it. It's called Lexio Divina, divine reading. It's praying scripture so you encounter Jesus and it changes and transforms you. And then talk to God from your heart. A beautiful acronym to remember to talk to God from your heart in a well-rounded way is ACTS, A-C-T-S. A, adoration. That's basically saying, God, you're awesome. Think of your favorite prayer song at Mass, your favorite praise song. Just pray to God from your heart. C is contrition. That's basically saying, God, I'm not awesome. It's admitting the ways that you failed and messed up, asking Him to forgive you and asking Him for strength. T, thanksgiving. Count all your gratefuls. Count all the ways that He's blessed you and make sure you thank Him for every one of those every day. Not just because it makes for a better, well-rounded prayer life, because it makes you a better, well, more well-rounded, healthy, happy person. Look, when you forget all the ways you're blessed, it's so easy for you to turn on yourself and just think, man, my life stinks. Teenagers do this all the time. Adults do this all the time. Count your gratefuls. Adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, S, supplication. That's the weirdest of the words. You don't need to remember that word, really, because you're going to remember to do this anyway. Supplication is asking God for the stuff that you need and asking for Him for the stuff that other people need. If you get up 10 minutes every day, have the discipline of a disciple to listen to God and then talk to Him from your heart, adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, supplication, dude, it will change your life. My secret is simple. I pray. So one, want greatness. Want the right stuff. Set your priority in the right place. Two, talk to God. Three, community. What do I mean by that? I mean deep fellowship with other people. Not just playing video games together, but actually going to the next level and asking, how are you doing with your walk in the Lord? This life's a journey. How are you doing in your journey? Find people who can encourage each other with that. None of us can stand tall on our own. Sequoias are the biggest trees in the world. You know how they stand tall? It's not because their root system goes really deep. It goes really wide and it's interlocked. All those roots are interlocked with all the other sequoias around them. You knock all the sequoias down around a huge sequoia, a couple storms, it'll start to fall down. That's us. We cannot stand tall by ourselves. Maybe that's why God made so many of us. We need each other. Now we need our godparents. We need our confirmation sponsors. Hmm? You know, they stand behind you when you're confirmed with their hand on your back. It's a sign of how they got your back throughout life. We need each other, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our youth ministry programs that are offered at our parish. We need each other to stand tall. Even the Pope has a small group that he goes to on a regular basis because even with his high standing in the church, he can't stay faithful by himself and he knows it. Go a little bit deeper with each other than just playing video games together. Ask each other, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing in staying faithful to the disciplines of a disciple? Are you staying faithful to God, to your faith? You're living out life to the full and hold each other accountable. Don't be afraid to call each other on. You know, even if you're not perfect, call your friend on to perfection and let him call you on too. All right, we're going to go right into the Sun next one. Sunshine's bright. As it moves across my So want greatness, pray, develop strong Christian community in your life. Four. The sacraments. Stay close to the sacraments. You will not get very far on a journey without fuel. The sacraments are our fuel. Mass. Go every Sunday. Go more often than that if you can, man. I had two choices growing up. You get up and go to Mass, or you're grounded for a week, and you get up and go to Mass anyway. Either way, I got up and went to Mass. You see, this isn't like an optional thing. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. It was a command. And it's in the Ten Commandments to keep Sunday holy. He didn't give us this as a commandment to give us another to-do. He gave it to us as a commandment because he knew we would need this spiritual food to live life to the full. And he wants what's best for us. And stay close to the sacrament of confession. It's the bounce that counts. Get up when you fall down. And if yesterday is ever holding you back, go get rid of it in the sacrament of confession. My son Joey loves asking me questions about when I was seven because he wants to be like me when he's 37, wants to make sure he's on the right track. So, you know, he's like, Dad, was your favorite color blue? I'm like, yeah. He's like, awesome. I'm like, Dad, would you play ninjas when you were seven? I'm like, yeah, of course I am one. He's like, yes. And one day he's like, Dad, how do you remember when you were seven? I don't know, Joey, how do you remember yesterday? And he goes, I don't remember yesterday. 
<laughs> you got an amazing ability to forget about yesterday. God won that ability for you to forget about yesterday on the cross. And as much as he loves you singing your songs of praise to him and going to religious ed classes and going to youth group and stuff like that, you know, more than all that, he loves when you give him your worst sin and confession because he died so you could be free to that. And you know, if, if there's something else holding you down from yesterday, maybe not something you did, but something someone did to you, you know, some way you feel messed up inside, please talk to somebody about that. Don't ever be afraid to deal with your wounds in your life because God wants you to live life to the full. And you gotta move on from yesterday to do that. So one, you gotta want greatness. Two, you gotta pray. Three, community life. Four, stay close to the sacraments. Five, commit to a life of mission. God is calling you on a mission. Two thirds of God's name is go. You know, the whole missionary aspect of the Christian life, that's not just for the Pope or priests or, or religious. And it's not just for, for missionaries or full-time professional youth ministers. It's for everybody. It's a mandatory part of living out the Christian faith. The whole word mass, it takes its meaning from the last words of mass when it used to be said in Latin, ite misa est, sent. It's the word a Roman commander would use when he sends his army out on a mission because it connotes mission. You're sent for a purpose. See, because God isn't going to give you that much grace so you can keep it to yourself. He gives you that grace so he can send you to be his hands and feet in a world that so badly needs the light of Jesus Christ and the mouthpiece of Jesus Christ and, the, and just loving and serving and leading others back to him because a lot of times your friends need you to talk to them about the faith if they're ruining their lives doing stupid stuff wandering off into darkness. One of my favorite saints who lived hey, out this. mission, who lived for others, Father Vincent Cappadano. He's a saint in the making. His cause for canonization has been open in the Catholic Church. So God willing, he'll be a saint soon. He was a Marine chaplain during the Vietnam War. His Marines loved him because he was always right there with them on the front lines, no matter how bad things got. Well, one day this battle broke out called Operation Swift. 250 Marines found themselves completely surrounded by 2,500 North Vietnamese Army. The guys who survived that day, they said they didn't even know where to shoot back because artillery was flying in at them in every direction. Another guy who survived said it sounded like Niagara Falls. If you've ever been on a boat near the falls, you could barely hear anything, just this rumbling sound. And right in the midst of that chaos, Father Vincent Cappadano. So this, this one guy, he, he was hit with shrapnel, he was on the ground bleeding, terrified, thought he was gonna die. He remembers when Father Cappadano got up to him, this bubble of peace descended on him. It was total silence. And he said, you'll be all right, Marine. God is with us, someone will get you out. Another guy I had the honor of talking to him, he was the communications guy that day. He had 70 pounds of gear in his back. Everything started to explode around him. He thought, this is it, I'm gonna die. He felt a hand on his shoulder. That hand picked him up, threw him through the air into a ditch, saved his life. He looked up at his Father Cappadano. He said, Father, take my gas mask. Father Cappadano turned it down. He said, no, 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 you'll need it more than me. He gave his life that day. He was running to minister to a medic that had been shot, and he was shot 27 times in the back. The USS Cappadano was named after him. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor after his death. It's the highest honor you can get in the military. His name's in the Vietnam War Memorial. The only way to see it is to kneel. The way he died, that's the way Christians are called to live their everyday life. Not for themselves, but for others. We have enough people in this world living for themselves. We have enough people in this world who want to be the next pop icon that everybody notices and loves and everybody follows on Twitter and Facebook or whatever it is. We don't need the next rock star. We need we need the next Father Vincent Cappadano. You gotta be that person. You see, you gotta be that person in your daily life. You see, God isn't calling me to go into your cafeteria and spread his love, but he is sending you there. He's sending you to go, to be on a mission, and to bring his love and presence and kingdom to this whole world. We have enough people in this world who are living for themselves. We don't need more of them. We need saints. So want greatness, pray, Develop strong Christian community in your life. Stay close to the sacraments and be committed in your daily life to mission. Not waking up and saying, how's the world gonna serve me today? But waking up every day and saying, God, how do you want me to love and serve the world in your name? So living out the disciplines of a disciple, man, it's not overly complex, you just gotta do it. Let me encourage you right now, in these final days or weeks leading up 
to when you receive the sacrament of confirmation, take these disciplines of a disciple more seriously than ever. What God wants to unleash in your own life and through you in this world, the power he wants to give you to live out life to the full, it's beyond comprehension. And the more open your heart is, the more you're gonna be open to receiving that life and that power. But you know what? Ultimately, the Christian life and all of human existence, it's not just about to-dos or five steps to happiness or facts you gotta learn or rules you gotta follow, though all that's important. Ultimately, all this, at the center of all this, at the center of this journey of faith, it's a person who loves you very much and who wants you to make your life a response to his love so you can live life to the full. Your life story is part of a bigger story. Before God created the universe, he had you in mind. When he hung on the cross, it was out of love for you. When he rose from the dead, it was so he could share his own divine life with you. And when he sent the Holy Spirit, it was so that he could work in your life to renew the whole world. You're kind of a big deal. No, seriously, you don't know how important you are. See, this journey of faith doesn't just teach us who God is. It shows us who we are. You are called, you are chosen, you are sent by God to share his love and life with all the world. couple of questions about what Chris went over. In the first segment, Chris lists as a dis discipline of the disciple is for us to want what? Peace, greatness, truth, or sleep? Let's ask somebody. All right, let's come over here and hi, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah, who's the person on your left? Addison. Addison. What question did you ask Addison? Or what she did ask you? Favorite color. You asked her her favorite color? What'd she say? Green. Green. All right. Um, gosh, I forgot your name again. Addison. Addison. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what, what did Chris say was one of the things that the discipline of a disciple is? Is it peace? To want. Is it want peace, greatness, truth, or sleep? I hope you're not going to say sleep because that's not wrong. That's not right. Peace. Okay. All right. Let's ask somebody else. Uh, let's go over here. So I embarrassed, I embarrassed Capri yesterday. <laughs> Look at this. <it. laughs> wa we were walking to the store, and she was behind her mom, and I happened to be walking into the parking lot, and I kept saying, hi, Capri, hi, Capri. Her mom turned around and was like, Capri, and she just, anyway. 
um, in her in, uh, to help. I, I do not look, if you ever see me other than in Sunday, I look rough. All right, let's put it that way, right? <laughs> I look rough um, where I dress. But anyway, um, Olivia, who is the person on your right? Charlotte. What question did you ask Charlotte? Where does she live? Where does Charlotte live? Montville. All right, Charlotte. What was the thing, what did Chris say that as a disciple of, discipline of a disciple is for us to want what? Peace, greatness, or truth? I'm going to skip sleep because that's wrong. What do you think? What? Can't hear you. Greatness. All right. That is correct. As a, a discipline of a disciple, which we all are, we should be striving for greatness. Not for... Eh, I'm just hanging around watching TV. All right? We should be striving for greatness. Does anybody know what it means to be great? Just by definition? I mean, if you ask to be great, and you don't know what it is, how are you supposed to get there? You say, that's great. What does that mean when you say, oh, that's great. That was a great shot. That was a great dinner. That was a great movie. What do you mean by that? What do you think? Better than what? Better than average is what it means. Greatness is just above average. So if you want to just be average, which is not what you're called to be because you have faith and you have love, you could be great. Does anybody know what it means to what discipline means? What do you think, Zach? Discipline is something that you do. Discipline is something you're going to deprive yourself of. Right? You're going to do something that's what you normally don't do. Right? There's going to be some pain involved. It's called discipline. Yeah. So Go ahead, Mr. Moss. That, so, that leads to my next question. Everybody remember Chris was talking about Father Cappadano. All right? He said, he, something was incorrect. Um, he said he was a Marine uh, priest or chaplain. That's actually not correct correct because the marines do not have chaplains those are the marines are part of the navy uh, if you don't remember i actually served in the marines for eight years i'm very well aware of father capadano now he was actually a navy chaplain but the navy the marines are part of the navy and anytime we go on any operation there is always a chaplain that comes with us and whether that is we're going to a friendly country or we're going for, to a hostile country, the chaplain is always there. They're not in the rear drinking coffee, listening to the radio. That's not what they're there for. They're up in the front right next to us while we're shooting or while we're taking fire. They're there right next to us. They're not doing anything that's, that is aggressive. I mean, they're not participating in any of that. <clears throat> they are there if, unfortunately, somebody gets hurt gravely to help administer their last rites. It's brave. Or help tend to the wound, wounded, which is what Father Cappadano did. Anybody know, he mentioned that he won the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's called, it's called the Medal of Honor now. It is the highest award that you could possibly get in the military. It is the only award that you would get in the military where only one person, one person in the whole world is allowed to pin it on you. Anybody want to take a guess who that one person is? No one else is allowed to do it. What would you say, John? The President of the United States is the only one who is allowed to actually pin that award on your chest. Nobody else is allowed to do it. It is that rare. And it is given away in extraordinary circumstances. It is mainly given away for people who have sacrificed their lives to help others. Which is exactly what Father Cappadano did from making sure that people who were injured were being tended to, from putting himself in the line of fire to moving people out of the way. 
He carried no arms. He carried nothing. Other than his vestibules, his cross, his, his rosary. That's the only thing he carried. Does anybody have a family member that's in the military? Raise your hand high. Yeah, a few people. It's an honor. Mr. Lodato mentioned something about discipline. <laughs> if you ever go in the military, you're going to realize what, realize what discipline means real fast. One of the things that I liked is a story I read. And that is, raise your hand if you're one of these people, because I certainly was one of these. <clears throat> it was a story about a, man, a father who had a son who joined the Marine Corps. But he had a hard time getting his son to clean his room, or to mow the lawn, or take the trash out, or do whatever it was that he asked him to do. He just described me. I will do it when I get back. I will do it tomorrow. Well, his son went to the Marine Corps boot camp. He came back home. First thing his father asked him, so, what'd you learn in Marine Corps boot camp? <laughs> Looked right at his father and said, Dad, I learned what the word now means. It means now. All right? Discipline. Yeah. Something that you're used to doing, you cannot do anymore. Go off on a tangent real quick, but in Marine Corps boot camp, you are not allowed to say the word I, or me, or you. Why not? It is part of the process. Why do you think that is the case? Why can't, why, why, so discipline, so what Mr. Malala is trying to say, I think, what I hear him saying is that it's not on your terms, it's on somebody else's yep. terms. It's a team. It's, on, it's not on your terms, it's not about you, is what, is, is what discipline is all about. You're part of something bigger, like this faith community, like the military, like your school, like a team. When it's not about you, when you humble yourself, or you get humbled, if you will, then you start to see a bigger picture. So we have to break you down in order to build you up. But if you want to do self-discipline, meaning do it yourself, deprive yourself of something for somebody else's sake, that's what self-discipline is. That's what discipleship is. When they, when they dropped everything, they dropped their nets and went and followed Jesus. They dropped their livelihood for the sake of somebody else. That was extreme. We're asking you just to be aware of that. Humility. Everybody's heard of the term, there's no I in team. And we play sports, probably heard that a lot. Absolutely is true. To be able to step away from what's important to me and think about what's important for the larger group. In my particular case, the larger team, your unit. Mm -hmm. In the context of the church, it's everybody else. What's important? What does Jesus want us to do? This quote up here. Jesus saying... You didn't choose me, meaning I didn't choose Jesus. He chose me. He chose me. And the way I look at it is, what do you want me to do? Hmm? That's fine. Everybody should have saw the quote. All right, so let me finish the last bit of questions and we'll get going. Um, Chris tells the heroic story of the servant of God, Vincent Capadano, who was killed while serving in the what war? Vietnam. Vietnam is correct. Give you an idea, this battle that actually you're talking about happened in 1968. Both Mr. Lodato and I were alive at that time. <laughs> it has now been open for canonization, which is an indication of being elevated to sainthood. All right? A lot of times we hear about saints that happened a long time ago. Well, guess what? They happen all the time. There are ones that are very recent. Pope John Paul II. Now John Paul the Great. He's a saint. Mother Teresa is now a saint. All right, I think that was the last part of that. Did you want to go into... Did they ask him if there's any of uh, the other four? What's that? The other four... Uh, the, uh, Parts of the discipleship there. Oh. Those are the acts. 
I'm going to go that. Yeah, so the first one was greatness, right? Yeah. Does anybody remember the other, the, the second one? <clears throat> it was an acronym. Started with the letter A. What was the second? Um, how did he put it, the discipleship? So when we use the, and you want me to read the student question? The first, the first question was. First question, the first thing Chris lists as dis discipline of the disciples is for us to want greatness. Yeah, there's five disciplines, right? Yeah. Five disciplines. One's greatness. What was the second one? What was the second one? Remember, remember. Max, you remember? Rewind. Who's to your right, Max? Charlie. Charlie? What'd you ask him? What his favorite food was. Favorite food was? Let me guess. <laughs> what was his favorite food? Chicken. 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 I was going to say steak. How do you like your chicken? <laughs> Cooked. <laughs> Grilled, fried. You like it all. All right. Sauteed? Yes. All right. So you remember what, uh, what the second one was? No. You don't remember? Can I give you a hint? Sure. Begins with a P. Frank. <laughs> Come on, guys. How'd you throw your voice over there? <laughs> that was good. Wow. I asked Charlie, he come, and it comes out of your voice. That's good. Pray. The second, the, the second discipline, pray. But there was an acronym, like Mr. Milano was saying, there was an acronym. X. X. Correct. X was the acronym. Anybody want to participate? Want to make a contribution to this class this evening? Or we're going to be struck with fear all evening. Is that what we're going to do? We're just going to pick on people, right, Addison? And the person to your left is? Capri? Oh, you're the Capri that he was talking about? No, different one. All right, what, what did you ask Capri? What? what did you ask her a question? What did, what did you find out about her? Did you ask her a question? Um, what's her favorite, color? favorite color? What's her favorite color? Purple. Purple. All right. Do you remember the acronym that we were talking about? Axe? Axe? Excellent. Very good. What was the first part of Axe? What was the A? <laughs> Lindsay, you remember? Let me turn this off. Who's the person to your right, Lindsay? Person to your right? <laughs> Did you ask her a question? Did you ask her a question? What did you ask her? Favorite color? What was your favorite color? Blue? Good choice. Mine too. Do you remember the A and, a and X? Adoration. Very good. This is going to be a long night. We don't keep going. Anyone want to raise their hand and participate? Zach, who's the person to your left? Uh, what did you ask him? Uh, favorite color. Favorite color. What's your favorite color? Red. Red? Mine too. Wait. <laughs> what's, the, what's the C? Zach, you want to help him? You want to help him? Go ahead. Man, that's good. He go right through you. Contrition. What does contrition mean? We'll let, leave that alone. Anybody over here know what the T was? Aiden, you know what the T was? No. No, I don't know yet. Right? I don't know yet. Remember that one? I don't know yet. Who's the person to your right? Who's the person to your right? What did you ask him? Favorite food was? What's, what's his favorite food? What's his favorite food? <laughs> Jack, favorite food is chicken again? Jack, you know what the T is? You don't know? I don't know yet, right? I don't know yet. You're still in learning mode, right? You didn't quit on me yet, right? All right, hang in there. We're gonna look. I think someone knows over here. Hold on a second. What is your name? Tess. Who's the person to your left, Tess? Uh, Ellie. Ellie, what would you ask Ellie? Food More food. All right. What is it? Sushi. Oh, that's good too. All right. What's the tea? What's the tea, Ellie? Do you know? Thanksgiving. Very good. Very good. And how about the uh, what's the uh, what's the last one? 
oh, you don't, you don't know that one, John. You don't get the hand down now. I don't know anything, and that's it. It's over. I'm not saying it. <laughs> what was your name? Uh, Grace. Grace. Who's the person to your left? And Tess, what's, what'd you ask Tess? Favorite color? Favorite color? Pink. Pink. All right, Tess. What's the S? Supplication. Supplication. Very good. Excellent. Good job. Good Excellent. Job. Good job. All right, there's two more. There's actually, do we have time, Mr. Milano? Uh, there's two more. So that was uh, greatness and prayer, and prayer had an acronym of ACTS, and then there was another, the third one. What's your name, my friend? Javin. Who's the person to your left? Ian, what'd you ask Ian? Color? What's his favorite color? Blue? Your color. What's the C? Community. That word comes up a lot. Community. Very good. Excellent. What about the next one? The fourth one. What do you think? Go ahead, Johnny. Who's the person to your right? That's Trip. Trip. Is that his real name? Or Jim, sorry. That's all right. Flying squirrel. Excellent. <laughs> what's that, so, Trip, what, is, what does a flying squirrel taste like? Trip, do you know what? What's, the, what's it taste like? Your favorite food? No, he said. No, his favorite animal. Favorite animal. <laughs> so, he said food. <laughs> what is it? Did you see the look on his face? He's like, what are you talking about? Hell. <laughs> That'd be nasty. Hard to catch up All right, what do, you think the, what do you think the fourth one is? The fourth one's pray. Oh, that was the second one. Said that. We're, 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 out, we're after that one. It begins with an S. Begins with an S. Anybody else know? What'd you say, sir? Who's the person to your right? Maddie? What would you ask her? Favorite color? What is it? Red. All right, Maddie, what do you think? You have no idea? <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think, I think Sarah knows. Sacrament. That was good. Sacrament. Sacrament. You guys, the sacraments are a big deal. The sacraments are a really big deal. The sacraments keep, keep things going, keep you fresh, keep you clean, keep you alive, right? So the sacraments are a big deal. And the last one is what? Got all the answers over here. Nobody else has an answer? Begins with an M. Mission? Everyone's just guessing. <laughs> Any more guesses? Mission? Mission? Yeah. What do you think, Matthew? I'll, I'll give, hold that thought. What do you think, Matthew? Who's the person to your left? Who's the person to your left, Matthew? Matthew. Your, your military Matthew. left. Your military left. Your left. That would be your right. Matthew, thank there you. you. Go. Uh, what's your name? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Did you ask him a question? Did you introduce yourself? This is sad. All right, enough. Yeah. His favorite brand of jeans is Levi's. Oh, there's something new. Favorite brand of jeans is Levi's. All right, Don, what's the, what's the last one? <laughs> Glad to hear. What do you think it is? I think you heard it already. What do you think it is? It's mission. Right. It's mission. And that's what we're all doing. So let, me, so let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up, and I'll give this back to Mr. Milano. So what, what the Bible verse was that you're called by name. Right? He's calling you. You're one of the lucky ones. You're one of the lucky ones. You're part of a billion person community of Catholics. You should be awful proud of that. And we're counting on you to continue on what we've shared with you, especially the love part. All right? So mission is a big deal. So when you use these, these five things that, um, what's the gentleman's name? Chris. Chris talked about being great, praying, community, sacrament, and mission. You become a better disciple. And you'll have more discipline and build your faith and be part of this community.
All right? Hope you remember that. All right, so we're going to start, we're going to get into some questions of review for the last, uh, since we started in August, a couple of things. However, before we get into that, I want to humbly apologize. Uh, in fact, I went over, I talked to Blythe with my face so red. Um, I didn't actually see Capri yesterday. <laughs> I saw Blythe, and I kept calling her Capri's name. Uh, so I apologize, that. Capri. It was actually Blythe I saw yesterday. And... Uh, yeah, it took me a while before my face returned to its normal color uh, before I can get back up again. <laughs> so, again, I, just, I apologize. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did that last week with Kayla. <laughs> so I kept wondering, why does Capri keep looking at me, and why is Blythe look, laughing at me? So I was like, okay, well, oh, no, here we go. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so we're going to go over some questions. There's a couple of questions we're going to go over that are specific for being, well, things that I think you should understand. Then we're going to ask some specific questions about some of the chapters we went over. And we'll do this for a little bit until we get to maybe five minutes left, ten minutes left, then you closing arguments, Mr. Lodell and I will talk about our final thoughts. All right? First one. If you are in my PSR class and you don't get this right, there's something wrong. All right? So I'm not going to call on you if you are in my PSR class. All right? First question. What is that? Do not, do not yell out anything. All right? That's not fair to the other people. Do not yell out anything unless you're called upon. All right. What is the name of our religion? Ryan, who's the person on your left? Nick. What's, what question did you ask Nick? Uh, what's, your color? what's your favorite color, Nick? Green. Green. What's the name of our religion, Nick? Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. All right, let's ask someone else. All right, let's go over here. Uh, you, already know, you know the answer to this. All right, Ellie, who's the person on your right? Tess, what, what question did you ask or you and Tess talk about? All right. Talk amongst yourself for a quick pick. I'll come right back to you. All right. Let's go over here. Who is not in my PSR class? Here we go. Rocco, who's the person on your right? Kyle. Hmm? Kyle. Kyle. What, what did you and Kyle talk about? School what school did you went to? What school did you go to, Kyle? Chardon. High school. Chardon. Kyle, what's the name of our religion? Roman Catholic. All right. Let's go back and ask, ask Ellie and Tess again. All right, Ellie, what did you and Tess talk about? Favorite color. What's, what's Tess's favorite color? Pink. Tess, what's the name of our religion? Uh, Roman, Catholic. Roman Catholic. If you were in my PSR class, let's ask that person. <laughs> Faith, what's the name of our religion? Don't know. <laughs> Marissa, you know? What? What? Christian. All right. The name of our religion is Christianity. It is not Catholic. It's Christianity. That is the religion. So, of course, the next question is, what is Catholic? Catholic is a form of Christianity. It is the biggest form of Christianity. Catholics, Protestants, both Christian. All right? The name of your religion is Christian, Christianity. Jesus Christ, Christian. All right? Anybody remember what Catholic means? It's one of the marks of the church. Oh, that's one of my questions. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Go it's ahead. all right. It's all right. All right, let's ask Zach. Zach, what does Catholic mean? Doesn't it mean uh, one? It means... All right. Actually, what, what it actually means is not one of my questions, so we can ask that. Here, raise your hand if you know what the word Catholic means. We covered this in the PSR class. It's one of the marks of the church. One of the marks one, of the one church. One of the four marks of the church. It begins with a U. Universal. <laughs> that is correct. Universal. <laughs> Catholic, Catholic means Universal. It comes down because at the time when the early Christian church was developing, there was a lot of Jewish people who were converting to Christianity but still wanted to follow some of the Jewish teachings. But there were a lot of Gentiles, non-Jewish people, that were coming into the church who didn't follow those teachings and didn't follow those traditions. So you had the Jewish, former Jewish people who wanted to follow certain things, 
And depending on where they lived, they had to follow those certain things. But you had Gentiles who were not Jewish living in another area that didn't have to follow those things. So now you had two sets of rules for people who are Christian, depending on where you live. Church got together and said, that's wrong. We have one universal set of rules. And I don't care where you live. I don't care who you are. The same rules apply for everyone. That's where the word Catholic comes into play. All right, moving on. Who came to the apostles and Mary in the upper room after Jesus ascended into heaven? Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> I think you right, know. Let's, who haven't I called on real quick? Who haven't I best? Grady, who's the person on your left? JJ. JJ, what question did you and JJ talk about? Where do you want to go on vacation? Where does he want to go? Germany. Germany. Where in Germany? Anywhere? Okay, all right. JJ, who came to the apostles and Mary in the upper room after Jesus ascended into heaven? No idea. Okay, all right. Ask somebody else. Capri. I got it right this time. This person on your right? Addison. What do you and Addison talk about? Favorite color. Favorite color. What's Addison's favorite color? Pink. Pink. Addison, who came to the apostles and Mary in the upper room right after, Je after Jesus ascended into heaven? Don't know. Evie, who came, into the up, who came into the Apostles of Mary in the upper room after Jesus ascended to heaven? Thank you. All right. Who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Folks, what's going to happen in two weeks? The Holy Spirit's going to come down on us. All right. My next question, the Holy Spirit. In what form did he appear in? Mm. Give you a hint. You can see it today if you look to your right. Is it up there? It's not up there. You lied to us. <laughs> no, it's in one of those. I saw it. All right. Uh, one, well, let's ask somebody else real quick. And then we're going to keep moving. Uh, let's see. Addison, person on your right? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to sit down. All right. What's your name? Liz. Liz, person on your right? Lindsay. Lindsay. Wow. Lindsay. Okay. Lindsay. What did you and Lindsay talk about? Favorite color. Favorite color. What's Lindsay's favorite color? Light blue. Lindsay, in what form did the Holy Spirit present himself to the apostles of Mary? In other words, what did he look like? Any idea? Nope. All right. Hi, what's your name? Ian. Ian? All right. Well, since we've got to keep moving, am I going to ask who the person on your right is? Uh, Ian, what form did the Holy Spirit show up in the upper room? A dove. A dove. The Holy Spirit presented himself in the form of a dove. I could have swore there was one over there, but I was I mistaken. thought there was one, too. All right? The Holy Spirit presented himself as a dove. Now remember, the apostles of Mary were in the upper room right after Jesus ascended to heaven and were terrified because the person they followed move is, told them he's going away. And the Jews were out looking for Christians to persecute them. They didn't know what to do. They were very afraid. But Jesus said, before he ascended to heaven, do not be afraid. I will send the Holy Spirit to help guide you. And then the Holy Spirit appeared as the form of a dove, and flames came out of him and into the apostles and Mary and gave them something, gave them the gifts that they needed in order to go out and spread the word. That particular day was called what? Raise your hand if you know what that day was called. Somebody besides, hi, with Michael, what was that day called? Pentecost. All right? That day was called Pentecost. That day is day one of the Christian church. Day one. That day also represents the sacrament you are going to receive in a two, I think three weeks. The Holy Spirit will come upon you in the sacrament of confirmation. And will give you the gifts that you need to go forward. One of the things I said back in August is confirmation is not the end. It is the beginning of your work as a Christian to go out and spread the word. And the Holy Spirit coming into you will give you the gifts that you will need to be able to do that. You just have to trust it. 
and believe it. That's your job. I, always, I say this a lot, but I, I, I debated whether I was going to say this tonight. When I usually am here for the sacrament of confirmation. I like to stand right over there. Because I want to see when you receive the sacrament, can I see the Holy Spirit coming into you? Now most people are saying, Mr. Malone, <laughs> you can't see the Holy Spirit. I know. But I can see the effects the Holy Spirit has on people. Most of the time, when they receive the sacrament, most people don't have a reaction. But in the years that I've been doing this, I've seen four people have a reaction. A couple years ago, there was a person who was in my class, who was more concerned about talking with their friends than paying attention. Constantly had to be corrected to pay attention. And they did. They'd come to the confirmation session. I'd see that they were talking, and I would call on them to try to get them a little bit motivated. Didn't matter. They'd still do it. When that person came up to receive the sacrament of confirmation, I was standing right there. When the bishop put the oil on her forehead, her face got extremely red, and she started crying. and walked back to her pew, tears falling down her eyes. She had a reaction. I saw it. Now, most of you aren't going to have that, but you might. You might have something that feels weird. It's the Holy Spirit. How much time we have? <laughs> Here I am yapping away. I got you. Okay. So we're going to have a couple questions on the chosen lessons. We won't go too far. But the first one, I like this one. The very first chosen video that we watched. The very first one. There was a lady who talked about being on a TV show, in, a reality TV show, and winning it. Anybody remember the name of that show? Or what that person, what that lady did? What was the show about? Zach, what do you think? America's Next Top Model. Her name was Leah. She won it. And she talked about what happened afterwards. One of the things that she mentioned was her paychecks had what in it? Please do not call out things. Her paychecks had a comma in it. She had a lot of money. But it didn't make her happy. She thought she had a lot of friends because everywhere she went, there were people always around her. But she quickly realized they weren't there for her. They were there for the show or for the job or for the money. They didn't care about her. Next, uh, lesson three. What's your story, God? Unlike Eve, who dis unlike Eve, who disobeyed God, who said yes to God's plan? Hi, what's your name? Liliana. Liliana, is the person on your left? Mira. Mira? What did, what did you and Mira talk about? Her favorite color. Favorite color is what? And her favorite color is what? Blue. Mira. Unlike Eve, who disobeyed God's plan, who, so who disobeyed God, who said yes to God's plan? Mary. Mary. Exactly. Mary, if you're in the PSR class, Mary's considered the new Eve. She wholeheartedly accepted God's plan and bore God's son. Let me skip forward because we don't have a lot of time here. Oh, next section. How do you know God is real? Chris, the, the person who did the videos, Chris compared the probability of the universe forming out of nothing. You might have heard the term the Big Bang Theory. All right, forming out of nothing to the probability of a print shop exploding and resulting in a what? Uh, what did I call the... Hold on, a print shop. Danny, is the person on your left? Scott. Scott. What do you and Scott talk about? Uh, what's his favorite color? Favorite color. Favorite color. What's your favorite color? What's his favorite color? Blue. Blue. Scott. What did he say the probability of, probability of a print shop exploding and resulting in a what? Max? Max? Yeah. What's the question? What's the answer, Max? Dictionary. 
a dictionary, all right? The Big Bang Theory, the universe out of nothing just exploded in shazam, there's a whole bunch of planets and stuff, all right? That doesn't make any sense. There's life. Just the Big Bang and now all of a sudden there's life. That doesn't make any sense. It's like saying a print shop, everybody knows what a print shop was, places that make books and newspapers, exploding. And the next thing you know, here's a dictionary. All right? That doesn't make any sense either. Why be Catholic? What are the four marks of the church? This should have been my question up towards the top. What are the four marks of the church? Let's pick on Grace. Grace, what are the four marks of the church? Oh, there we go. One, holy, Catholic, and apostolic. You say them every time you come to Mass and you recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker, all right? The Nicene Creed. We believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Raise your hand if you know what apostolic means. I thought apostolic was universal. Okay, Zach. Zach, don't. I didn't say shout out if you know what apostolic means, and that answer is wrong anyway. All right, Evie, what's apostolic mean? Like following the teachings of the apostles. Exactly right. Apostolic means you're following the teachings of the apostles. In my PSR class, I ask everybody to raise your hand if you read Jesus' autobiography of all the great things that he did that he wrote down. Raise your hand if you read it. It's awesome. It's the most popular book in... Oh, wait, no, it doesn't exist. It doesn't... Bible. Who wrote the Bible? Jesus wrote the Bible? No. Jesus didn't write anything. Jesus didn't write anything. Jesus didn't care. Jesus was about doing. So who wrote everything? The apostles wrote it all down. So if we follow the apostles' teachings, we know exactly what happened because they were there. They saw it and they wrote it down. Apostolic. That's what it means. We are we doing time? Yeah, we're close. Okay, we're one minutes. more and then we're going to wrap it up. We've got eight minutes. Okay, all right. The oil used at both baptism and confirmation is called what? Sacred chrism, mirror, sacred mirror, or a holy frankincense? Uh, who would I picked on over here? Maybe I will pick on Blythe for a minute here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look, she's looking. All right, Blythe. What is the name of the oil that's put on you in baptism and confirmation? Is it called sacred chrism, sacred myrrh, or holy frankincense? Sac uh, uh, what did I say? Sacred chrism? That is correct. All right? When you're standing here in front of the bishop, the bishop's going to pray, and he's going to say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he will put the oil on your forehead. And you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Is the same type of oil that was put on your forehead when you were baptized. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember I talked about that person in class. As soon as the bishop did that, she had her reaction. All right. We don't have a lot of time to go over anything else, but Mr. Ladada and I do want to talk about wrapping it up, our, our thoughts, um, and some uh, additional comments we may have. Do you want to go first? Do you want? Sure, sure, all right. sure. So first of all, as we, as we land this evening and, and, and the confirmation classes and, and finish your PSR program, if you will, I uh, just want to let you know it's been an honor to be with you on Sundays and during these confirmation classes. And I respect your courage to show up just whenever you do that, not knowing what the outcome is going to be, it's an act of courage. I always like to acknowledge that. And I just want you to carry on, right? This is really important for us. And one of the things that came to mind when I was uh, thinking about what to leave you with was something from what Jesus, it was one, one of the more motivating things when I read the Bible that, that moved me and kind of put things in perspective, and I wanted to share it with you. And if you ever thought about it this way, uh, if you haven't thought about it this way, maybe you should going forward, is that I think, does anybody remember who John the Baptist was? All right? John the Baptist came before Jesus. He cleared the way a little bit, right? He cleared the way a little bit. And they asked him, they said, you know, are you the, are you the Messiah? He's like, no, I'm not, I'm not that person at all. 
and what Jesus, Jesus was talking about him in Matthew 11, and he says here, for those, whoever has ears ought to hear, he's talking about John the Baptist, uh, to what shall I compare this generation? Is it like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another? We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, a sad song, but you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said he was possessed by a demon. By a demon. The son of man, Jesus, came eating and drinking, and they, and they said, look, he's a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. But wisdom is vindicated by her works. So what, was, what will this group be known for? What will you be known for? When you get, when you get chastised for, for speaking the word of God, like John the Baptist did, they thought he was possessed by demons. And then Jesus came along, and he hung out with a bunch of sinners and tax collectors. And they called him names, too. But he says, wisdom, your knowledge, your intellect, your understanding of what we're trying to share with you will vindicate itself, will justify itself. Your actions of wisdom will justify themselves. You're going to get you're going to get tempted. You're going to get beat down. You're going to get laughed at. But we're asking you to persevere and be like John the Baptist, right? Because your wisdom that you've learned will vindicate itself. So as you move through here, your faith is going to move back and forth. I heard a beautiful thing about faith from Father Jeff at Easter. He said people that have faith, people that have strong faith, don't need much evidence at all or no evidence at all. And then people that don't have a strong faith, you can present all the evidence you want, and they still won't believe you. And we all go through that. We all go through that. We all have different phases of our faith. And it's all right. Don't look down on people that don't necessarily have a strong faith like you do, that require more evidence, that need more information. And you might be in that spot too. Be patient is what we're trying to say. Love is patient and then stick with it. I think Mr. Milan also wanted to share with you something about faith as well. Yeah, so one of the things that I make sure that I mention a lot in my class is something that I think everybody here should always remember. Is you are not perfect. There is nobody who is perfect. You are going to make mistakes. Some of us make some whoppers. Some really, really bad ones. In the video, Chris talked about his seven-year-old son. He asked him what he did yesterday. His son said, I can't even remember yesterday. If you make mistakes, it's how you learn from them that is the difference. Being able to let go of things. I made a mistake. I'm sorry that it happened. I won't do it again. And not having that hanging over your head. In other words, you forgot all about yesterday. It's a big thing. Jesus knew that. He knew that we are human. We will make mistakes. We will make a lot of mistakes. It's why he gave us the sacrament of reconciliation. It is a way to wipe the slate clean. And forget about yesterday. Learn from it and move on. I urge you, as you go forward in your journey, take advantage of the rec sacrament of reconciliation a lot. How often you do it is up to you. But just walking into the confessional, just walking in, tells the priest that you want to make a change because you did the hardest part in getting into the confessional. That is the hardest part. Then it's just admitting it. Repenting. And forgetting about yesterday. Nobody is perfect. Nobody. Also, as you move forward, 
No matter which path you ultimately decide to take. The church is always here. What do I mean by that? Most of the time, and I'll, talk, I'll just use the phrase, when people go to college or they move away from home, that's usually when it starts. Because that presence, your parents, your family, is not there anymore. And most college kids don't go to church anymore. Whatever path you choose, if that describes you, the church is always here. You can come back and pick up right where you left off. The last thing. I mentioned about the reaction that this person had when she received the sacrament of confirmation. When I received it, I felt absolutely nothing. Zero. In fact, when I was in eighth grade, I couldn't wait to get out of school. But something happened in my life. Do some quick math here. Eight years later. Is that right? Uh, well, hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nine years later. <laughs> Nine years later. Something happened. That was the birth of my first child. Yes, I was 26. Wait. Is that right? No. Here, hold on. Wait, hold on. I can't do math. That's okay. 14. 14. No. A little more than that. 20. A little more. Wait, how, how much did you say, Zach? 14. 14. 20, 26. 12. 12 years. About 12. 12 years. Sorry. All right. 12 years later, I had a reaction. And that reaction happened looking down at my daughter as she was born. I had a big change happen to me. My wife and I started going back to church. Even though I was in the military, deployed overseas, still went to church. Got out of the military, went to church, enrolled my kids in the same school, St. Greg's, we went to. So just because something doesn't happen in a couple of weeks during the confirmation session, it will happen at some point in your life. That's it may be soon. Oh, wait. We got a question. We got a question. Hold on. Hi, what's your name? Tim. Tim. What's your question? Huh? You don't have a question. Are you over here talking? I thought you had a question. No. All right. Maybe we just pay attention. All right. So it will happen. It may not happen immediately. It may be 12 years later. It may be 40 years later. But regardless of what path you go on, just remember, you're not perfect, and the church is always going to be here for you. You can pick up where you left off. Great place to go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a great place to come in, shake off, reset. It's always going to be there for you. We're always going to be there for you. We'll always be there for you. So... Thank you very much for your time this evening. We are closed with prayer. All right, let's rise up. Who do we want to pray for? I think we're going to pray for the whole confirmation class. All right. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for the whole confirmation class now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 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 The Father and the Son and the, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. Please. All right, hold, hold on, folks. Hold on. Hold on. Mrs. Passa wants to say something. Oh. Get your mind. Long as you may hear the term confirmat. Confirmande. Confirmanda. Confirmanda. Thank you.
catchy, all right? And you'll hear people saying that. Sponsors of Pastor Amen. Yeah, all right, so that's you. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Please genuflect on your way out. Thank you. Papers. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you.